Hi guys! I'm so happy to see you again! I know that we've been out of school forever, but I figured we could read a book. How many of you guys like pirates? Yeah, I love pirates. So, I'm going to read a book called How I Became a Pirate by David Shannon and Melinda Long. Now, before we open the book, let's talk about it. What is this part of the book called? Do you know? This is called the cover of the book. There's a front cover and a back cover. The, what, the reason it's called a cover is because it covers all the pages that are inside. Do you know what this part of the book is called? This part of the book is called a spine. It holds the book together and keeps it upright. Just like you have a spine that keeps you upright. So, when you open the front cover of the book, you see a page. This page is called the title page. Do you know why it's called the title page? I'll give you a hint. It's called the title page because it has the title of the book on it. In which case, this book is called How I Became a Pirate. It was written by Melinda Long. That means Melinda Long is the person who wrote the story. And it's illustrated by David Shannon. David Shannon is the person who drew all the really cool pictures. David Shannon also illustrated um, No No David and Fergus. Those books are also really fantastic. Duck on a Bike. Oh, he also wrote Duck on a Bike. So, I'm going to read How I Became a Pirate by Melinda Long and David Shannon. Look at him. What do you think he's doing? He's got a hat on and a sword and some rain boots. Hmm, I don't know. Pirates have green teeth when they have any at all. I know about pirates because one day when I was at the beach building a sandcastle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it. And because I could hear the pirates singing, hey ho, blow the men down, they were a little off key. I tried to tell Dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell Mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. Uh oh. What do you think is going to happen? <gasps> when they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, mighty! Bathish the Spanish main. No, I said. This is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat. Then he yelled back to his crew. He's a digger, he is, and a good one to boot. A good one to boot, the others agreed. What be your name, matey, the head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacobs, sir, I told him. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braidbeer and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We've a chest of treasure to bury. Aye, treasure, the other shouted. You're coming with us, Braidbeer told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind, as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. So they're taking him to his boat. That's how I became a pirate. Look at him. He's sitting at the front of the boat. You think he's going to go on an adventure? As soon as we were on board, Braidbeard showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Gotta find a safe place for this here treasure. It's time we were off, he announced it. We're off, we all shouted. And then we set sail. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea shanties. The louder, the better. And to say real pirate stuff like lamb lover and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braidbeard pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Down the hatch, me laddies! Down the hatch, we all shouted. Braidbeard gulped his food and said, Hand over the meat! The meat, we all roared! Nobody told us to finish our spinach because there wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. They weren't allowed on board. 
We talked with our mouthful, and nobody said please or thank you. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer. Braidbeard kicked the ball and yelled, "Arg soccer! Arg soccer!" The crew yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball at once, and it rolled right off the deck. After it, me hearties, Braidbeard commanded. After it, we all whispered. We fought over who would go get the ball. But it didn't matter anyway, because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. So much for soccer. Uh-oh, they lost their soccer ball. <gasps> By now, it was way past my bedtime. But nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Maybe that's why their teeth are all green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case. And they don't change into pajamas unless they want to. Pirates don't do anything they don't want to. Except for maybe swabbing the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever. But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried, and the only thing they had to read me was a map. Don't you have any books, I asked? Braidbeard looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. Uh-oh. Look at his face. He's not quite sure he wants to be there anymore, is he? It wasn't easy falling asleep without a story. But I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed up against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeard shouted. Batten down the hatches. Everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided that I didn't want to be a pirate after all. It's kind of scary when it storms, isn't it? But Mom and Dad make sure you're all okay. Just then, flash, crash, crack! Lightning hit the mast and split it right down the middle. What do we do now, yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollowed, ho hollered Braidbeard. Where will we bury the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. When the storm was over, we rode back to shore and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again. But I don't think I'll need it. Uh-oh. That says Jeremy Jacobs' backyard. Where do you think they buried the treasure? After that, the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to set sail. Before they left, Braidbeard handed me a flag and said, You make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. And if you ever need us, Braidbeard added, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the other shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. I have soccer practice. The end. All right, guys, I loved reading this book with you. So now that we've read How to Become a Pirate, do you remember how he had a map at the very back of the book? I think you guys should totally find a treasure map. You should draw your backyard and draw where you would bury treasure if you were a pirate. And afterwards, maybe you and your parents can go on a treasure hunt and find some really cool stuff. We're going to make a list and have it on the, at the page thing whenever we post the video. And I'll have some ideas of what you guys can have for treasure. Bye!